What if you were looking for a brand new development machine? And let's say you wanted to be around, I don't know, $600. And you wanted to be a tiny little form factor that could sit right on your desk. And what if you also wanted about a terabyte of storage and maybe like 32 gigs of RAM? Well, what if I told you that machine exists? And our friends over at Miniforum sent me this. The UM880 Plus Mini PC, powered by an AMD Ryzen 7. And they also have an Intel version powered by an i9. And today, we're going to take a look and see if it's any good for doing software development. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's go ahead and get into an unboxing of this thing. This is the UM880 Plus Elite Mini Series. This is the AMD Ryzen 7 edition of it. They actually have a complimentary version of this, the NAB9 Plus, which is an Intel Core i9 version. But I opted for the AMD because I hadn't had an AMD before. Some key points on here, that Oculink, which is an external GPU uh, that you can add on, and also USB 4.0, which you can see here on the back. Bunch of USB ports, display ports, HDMI as well. This specifically is running the Ryzen 7 8845HS for the CPU, which is an 8-core, 16-thread, uh, max boost at 5.1 gigahertz, and a Radeon 780M GPU, which is a 12-core uh, graphics GPU running at 2.7 gigahertz. So the cool part about this is that it's also expandable and it's customizable. So built into this is 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM that you can expand up to 96 gigs. It also has a one terabyte storage built in, which is a PCIe 4.0 SSD that you can expand to four terabytes actually, which is cool. And they actually sell a bare bones model of this that you can get if you want to just do everything yourself. Now in the box is a Visa mount, power adapter, HDMI, all that good stuff that you would expect right in the box. Now the Oculink is actually separate and that's what that is right there. You actually need to install it yourself if you want to use that. I'm not sure exactly why they did that, but it is what it is and I'll show you how to open it up. On the front, two USB 3.2 and an auxiliary jack. On the back, two USB 2.0, that USB 4, and then the HDMI Oculink display port and a 2.5 gigabit LAN connection as well to plug in that ethernet. There we go. You can see it a little bit better. So there's that Oculink that you'll need to install there. So this device itself is pretty small. It has a nice silver color. So it looks like that. It has venting on the three sides, bottom and on the left and on the right. And you can see the fan right there. And it does purr a little bit once you get it up and running. It has these nice little rubber feet as well. Overall, the design is really solid. Nothing to complain about. It's a nice, small little box, to be honest with you. Uh, I really like it. In fact, it's so small that here is my MX2 uh, that I have. And it's really just like two mice side by side. So it's really crazy. Just like the size of this thing in general. It's just so small, just like my Mac Mini. Now, if you did want to open it up and install that Oculink or modify it, you basically tear off these little feet and you get to screws. So just standard screws. And it even comes with replacements for those little feet as well. But you can just stick them right back in. So not too bad. And that's the device. So let's go ahead and talk about specs. Okay, I'm not much of a benchmark person, but I did run it through a few different things like Crystal Mark Retro. So you can see CPU, single and multi, disk reads and writes, and 2D and 3D different performance that it has. Uh, now this is pretty good overall that I can tell, but really something like user bench is maybe a little bit more realistic that we can see. I want to see here that we can see desktop performance pretty solid, gaming performance not so much, which makes sense. You cannot compare this thing to an M4 Pro uh, from Apple when it comes to GPU performance and even CPU performance. Well, in general, it has pretty solid processor performance with this uh, Ryzen 7. It's not going to be the same when it comes to that AMD Radeon 780M. We can see that overall, the performance of that Ryzen 7 is pretty solid. When it comes to the GPU, yeah, it can run some older games, but that's not what this machine is for. Overall, the read and writes of the drive and the memory are pretty good. I would say this is about half of what I'm getting on my uh, M4 Mac Mini when it comes to the SSD. And overall, the memory kit was pretty solid as well. 
I wanted to see what build times were, so I cloned my feedback flow application, which is some Azure Functions. It's also a Blazor front end and a bunch of other projects. So what I wanted to do is just boot up VS Code, open up that project completely from scratch, no OBJ, no bin, anything like that. And I wanted to see how long it took to load up the solution. And this is all real time, so pretty fast, actually. I also wanted to go in and I wanted to see how long it took to do like a .NET clean and a .NET build from scratch on here. Now, every time I ran this, I got variable anywhere from five seconds to 30 seconds inside of it. And in here in this run, we're at about 11 seconds or so. So pretty solidly fast overall. So pretty happy with that. Now, on the flip side, I also have my Mac Mini M4 Pro over here. So I wanted to do the exact same test. So I cleaned it all out, opened it all up inside of it. I wanted to see how long it took the C-sharp dev kit to boot up the solution. And I don't know, it's pretty similar. It's VS Code is pretty fast, let's just be honest. If I open up the actual terminal and we run the same commands, like a clean, for example, I don't know, it's super fast. I do a .NET build, it's even super fast. A lot of these on the Mac Mini, I was getting for just a few seconds, up to 10 seconds as well. So anyways, they're fast. All right, there you have it. That's a quick overview of the UM880 Plus Mini PC. I've been running it for a few weeks now, and the question is, well, how is it, right? We can compile code, we can run different applications like OBS to do different uh, screen captures and things like that, but how does it work every single day? Well, I've got to say, I really, really like it. It's been sitting right next to my Mac Mini, and I really enjoy having a dedicated Windows machine, which means I can run all of my emulators and all of my development setup right there. That being said, there is a little bit more of an active fan on this, and it definitely purrs a little bit more than my Mac Mini. But I gotta say, it is really convenient for the price. Having a terabyte of storage built in, 32 gigs of RAM right there ready to go, and the fact that you can just pop it open, take off these little feet and open it up and expand the storage and do whatever else you want, that is a huge perk. I also do like that the Oculink is there if you did want to have a dedicated GPU attachment. While in my case, I don't have one, it is nice that it exists. Overall, the port selection is pretty nice. Could always use a few more ports, that is for sure. But I like that everything is built in and has a super nice USB 4 as well. Well, I got to say, for $500 to $650 based on the different sale prices on Amazon, I am impressed by this little machine. I wouldn't just buy one for myself, but also probably for family members as well. Of course, you don't get a screen, you don't get a keyboard, and you don't get a mouse. So while that is the base price, you're going to want to add on to it as well. But I do want to say thank you to Miniforms for sending this machine, and I am going to be proud to have it right next to my Mac Mini, sitting there so I can do great development right on Windows at any time without having to go into any virtualization at all. Hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions about this machine or anything else in my development setup, please let me know in the comments below. Until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>